Hello, this is the Wednesday lecture for your assignment for organization and formal writing, and this week it's a revision. So um, there's not a new skill to be incorporated here. Rather, I want you to think about the feedback that I gave you and then your own goals and revise those paragraphs with an eye to making them as tight and as meaningful as you can. So I'll show you a little bit more about that. Revise and repost your organization paragraphs, please, on Joy Holga. It is connected to your reflective writing assignment, so I'm going to explain that a little bit in this video. I want to add, because it's not written here, when you post those organization paragraphs, please do so in our discussion thread. You'll see a new post. It's actually underneath the creative analysis assignment. I can't figure out how to change that. And then also copy it to your BGD. So let's talk about that um, a little bit more and the reflective writing assignment as well. All right, so here was my paragraph, this big clunky thing. And as I looked through it, I realized I have some things in my writing that I would like to change. So I came over here to the goal document, and this is my model document. You all have your own, obviously. I've created two goals. I'll create a third at some point as well. My first goal is this LY adverb and tightened language goal. And then my third goal that I just made, pretending that I made it for myself. Of course, I made them both. I said I want to use a mix of complex and simple sentences. I look at this paragraph and I'm going, yeah, this is just a little bit too much. Every single sentence is a complex one. That is, it has two independent clauses that are strung together. So I want to increase my amount of simple sentences to create texture in my writing. And then at times to just challenge myself as the writer to concentrate what it is that I'm trying to say. So I've added that here and I've added some goals for my revision and drafting so that I can keep an eye on it. And there's my rationale. When I go back to my piece, I look for those long, long sentences. They're everywhere in my piece, I realize, upon closer reflection. And there are some moments where I can make that a little bit better. Um, so for example, I see here in that second sentence, as soon as she is able, I write, why did I write that? And it's, not necessary. Of course, it's as soon as she is able. I can eliminate that phrase. And then I can tighten up the rest of the sentence. So instead of, but it is an act of, I'm going to just write, she changes her name to Holga in an act of childlike defiance. And now I've got a simple sentence. I'm saying the same thing, but without fluff. So what it looks like is here. My second sentence is now tighter and it's a lot more clear. I'm going to see if there's anything else like that in my first draft, and indeed there is. So at the end here, I really think my thoughts start spinning a little. I get excited about the next idea, and I know myself as a writer, when that starts to happen, I tend to overwrite. I tend to put way too much in my thought, and I lose some of those smooth transitions. So let me see what I can do to tighten that up a little bit. In the red sentences here at the bottom, I see there's an LY adverb, but why am I saying it like that? Why am I slowing it down like that? Can I tighten that up? I think I can. And instead of these sentences, I am going to say, when Joy's constructed self-image is stripped to its core by Manly Pointer, the story calls her the girl from that point forward. So that's just a plot sentence and that's okay. I can now insert a simple sentence to make meaning of that in a tighter way. There is no identity in the name she has chosen. That's different than what I had written. She has already disowned her identity as Joy and there's no strength to the name she has chosen. I like this better. It's saying the same thing, but it's got more power, more drama, and it doesn't ask as much from my reader because I don't want to annoy my reader with all these convoluted phrases. So with those revisions in mind. Now this is the reflective writing assignment and I think it can be a little strange, so I'm just gonna show you what it looks like. You're gonna start tracking your goals. This will be a really important part of our grade conference where you talk to me about what you've done and how you've grown. So you're gonna scroll all the way down to the goal tracking, which is on page four, and you're gonna add your thoughts to week four. It doesn't have to be a lot. You're looking for evidence of growth. So I'm writing quickly just for myself for when I'm looking back at this in December and I need to quickly remember what I'm talking about. Oh yes, good country people focus on narration and revision. And then here is my little piece of reflective writing. 
I revised my paragraph to include two simple sentences. I already like it better. I realized that I was overriding my case and including unnecessary clauses. After a while, this collection of complex and winding sentences starts to become exhausting. I also incorporated Mrs. Deegan's feedback in so doing because I eliminated some adverb phrases that had little meaning incompletely. So that is what I'm asking you to do with both your organization assignment and your reflective writing assignment. Let me know if you have questions.